This is a real subversion of the, the opening the monster thing, because now it's empty monsters. Are you drinking my monster? <laughs> I don't like it. So, Victor, <laughs> we just watched season three of uh, Darling of the Anime Community, Agretzko. What do you think? It's fucking great. I love Agretzko <laughs> so much. Is it really season three? I thought it was season four. Season three. I guess there was a Christmas special in the middle There somewhere. was a Christmas special last year. Anyways, uh, welcome... To another wholesome episode of Vic and Hope talking about things. Uh, if you're new to the channel, I hope there's a, a couple new people to the channel. Uh, we talk about cartoons, we talk about anime. Uh, I've got some fun anime related videos. Uh, there's my done quick videos and stuff. We got a we got a Patreon with a bunch of bonus content. We got bonus episodes and podcasts and stuff. Stick around, podcasts, discussions, anime, cartoons, whatever. Um, and we're also wholesome and gay. That's the, the biggest draw. But I doubt there's that many <laughs> new viewers watching this. Uh, but if you are, I guess comment Hi, that you're welcome. a new viewer if you're a commenter. Sit type. down. Have a monster. Yeah. Please. Enough shilling! Agretzko <laughs> season three. Um, fucking great. I mean, I we obviously love Agretzko. Um, I don't think that's a controversial opinion. Yeah, we're, we're just going to be gushing, probably. Uh, probably. But uh, yeah, what'd you think? Uh, every t every time, every time there's an announcement for something new coming out with the Gretzko, it's a, the, the Christmas special, the new season, I'm always like, oh no, is this it? Is this where a Gretzko isn't going to be as great as I once thought it was? Is this where it falls off the cliff? Is this the end of our love affair with the Gretzko? And then we watch it and it's always just like, nah, I still fucking love this shit. It just, it gets me on a fucking, on a level, you know? It's like that Hits perfect... you where you live. I, I love... Like young adult media, <laughs> perhaps because I am a young adult. Oh my god! Well, really, you're even. An almost yeah, now I'm now I'm a fucking old man because now I'm older than Agretzko. Oh so god. when I when I relate to the character now, it's like, oh god, I still don't have my shit together. No. <laughs> Oof. Um. Imagine relating to a twenty-five-year-old. Cringe. <laughs> yeah, but you know, as adults, Gretzko is massively relatable all the time as people trying to fit into this capitalist society. Um, Damn you, capitalist. That is just crushing you day and night. But uh, the latest season of Gretzko goes even further down that path of relatability, um, especially at a time where we're in a fucking international pandemic and. It, it makes you go, what the fuck am I doing with my life? What is my career? What is happening? Who am I? Uh, how, do, how the fuck do I, do I operate? Am I putting any effort into my life whatsoever? Uh, <laughs> is, a, is a normal, boring life okay? Yeah, I guess that's the central question of this season. Because uh, like the, the overarching plot is that Agretzko, through fucking up and and becoming indebted to a guy ends up working for an idol group she becomes the accountant for an idol group and then she ends up becoming part of the idol group yes and and is doing her metal death metal singing for the idol group which leads them to i guess i'm in spoiler territory already i guess yes you know. uh, spoilers yeah spoilers for here are spoilers for let's go in case you didn't sit down and watch all of it in one night like we did so here's here's the thing with the discussion like this there's, there's two ways to approach it. Either you haven't seen season three and you've seen the first two seasons and you want to see season three, go watch season three immediately. We watched it in one sitting in one night. They're only 15 minute episodes. There's only 10 of them. It doesn't take that That's long. That's a movie, dog. Go watch season Sit three down and, do it. and then come back and gush with us if, if you want to watch season three. Maybe you haven't seen much of Gretzko and you're on the fence about it listen to the rest of it and be like, wow, a Gretzko, that sounds pretty good. Maybe I'll actually go check a Gretzko out. Either way, you should watch the video. It's just maybe you should delay it. Maybe, or maybe you need some motivation to watch a Gretzko. Open up that you know. tab and just keep it open for the next six but months. But we're, we're going to get into spoilers because that's where all the interesting discussion is, you know? Of course. Um, we already gave you the review. It's great. Go watch it, it's, you know? Uh, yeah, of course. That's your review. Now we're getting into talking about what the fuck happened, and I hope you enjoy that more than just us. Uh, uh, two dickheads going like, is, is this good? Oh, yeah, it's good. It's great. <laughs> all right, hot take. Sweet. Let's get into wow, it. Wow, very spicy. <laughs> so yeah, it's all about Agretzko becoming part of this idol group 
so towards the beginning of the season, uh, she is indebted herself by playing too much VR games where there's a, uh, there's a hot a unicorn pay to play man. play VR game yeah. where you get to... Well, it's, have the it's, hot unicorn BF. Yeah, and you you get to buy him clothes. And then you get to dress him. So she's been spending like she spends something hundreds like and two hundreds thousand and thousands. Dollars. Yeah, because it's you know it's all yen conversion, but it's like it it shows her savings account at the beginning dwindling, dwindling and it's starting at like around like three thousand dollars in savings, which is and uh, she yeah. goes through all of it very quickly playing this fucking game. She becomes obsessed with well, this game and, and, and the starts reason, blowing her body. The reason she's there is because she's just come off her relationship with Tadano after, yeah. you know, realizing, okay, well, we're not right for each other. But that that doesn't make it hurt yeah. any less. She was know? emotionally wrecked, and so she's in a vulnerable place and is is playing this fucking game. And uh, through her making herself poor, she is now, like, she's barely eating anything, and she's, like, struggling to get by Really, really oh. getting wrecked. She's, like, contemplating borrowing, like, taking out loans from her friends, which is, like, I have, like, this is really relatable for me right now with, with the, the quarantine and, like, my money dwindling, and it's, like, I have, I've, I've lived in a way where it's, like, I should have been really cautious since this pandemic started, and it, there was that sense of, like, it's gonna be okay, and then it got to the point where it's, like, this is getting bad, and, and you start to have the thoughts of, like, do I ask for like a month off of rent? Do I do I try to get do I take out a personal loan? Like where how can I how can I get through this, you know? It's like I I am where she's at right now almost. I'm not I'm not that I'm not, bad. Like I mean, I'm not you haven't not spent really $2,000 yeah. on virtual clothes not, for your unicorn BF. But. but like, you know, I bought cameras and stuff last year cuz last year I was making good money and I and I made uh purchases and we went to Japan and all this shit. And and now it's that like oh god those things have have come full circle into fucking me now where I, where my roots. bank account is dry so like I'm I'm in the same place as her as like oh god you're starting to feel that like intense pressure so she's feeling that at the beginning of the season and then she goes and she's spending time with her mom and her mom gives her like fucking two grand or, or it's two hundred bucks two hundred bucks yeah she gives her two hundred bucks and she's like thank God I'm gonna live I can to see eat. another day. And so on her way home, she's driving and she passes by a, a like a steak restaurant and she's Ikinari like, Ikinari steak. Like, food. I can get nice food because my mom gave me money. She pulls into the parking lot and she accidentally runs into the van behind her. In a rental car. And then the guy gets out of the van. He was in the van. So she's in a rental car. She crashes in the bumper of a van behind her. So this is like <laughs> the most relatable thing in the world. Because, like, you're in a rental car, you're reversing into a spot, you're like, okay, I, I'm going to pull forward a little bit, and, and your brain just blanks, and, and you haven't shifted gears, and you just hit the gas, and she just, like, slams into the car behind her, and I'm just like, yeah. ah! <laughs> oh my god, yeah. Mm. So, an incident happened to me a few years ago, where I was, I just got done with the job, I was filming a concert. And I'm pulling out of this narrow parking lot late at night. It, it's kind of on a slope, so you can't really see what's behind you very well. I was pulling out real, 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 real slow. You know, I'm watching, like, oh, I, I, I'm looking at the car in front of me thinking, oh, is my bumper, is my, is the front of my car going to clear? Or am I going to scrape the car in front of me? Pay attention to that. Pay attention. Oh, I'm clear. Oh, thank God. And then, uh, and then, boop, hit the car behind me. Unlucky me. I start to pull forward a bit. And I see in the mirror, a guy has got out of the car. <sighs> this guy calls the police. We do a whole thing. He has to track me down and go through my insurance. He's claiming all this medical injury because his, because his neck hurts. And so I had a three-year-long court battle with this guy. Um, which didn't cost me anything, thankfully, because I had good insurance with fucking Geico. And so the, the insurance, you? I mean, it, 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 it increases my insurance premium. Your, your premium goes up. Because I sure. admitted fault or whatever. Yeah. But, but, uh, but I didn't have clearly, to pay for this guy in any way. <laughs> that did cost him something. As we learned yeah. from the discussion in Agretzko, if uh, you are not at fault, your insurance won't represent you. So you're paying your legal fees out of pocket. Yeah. Which means that's what that idiot I mean, we don't did. know if there's a difference with Japan with, with the, you know, how mm -hmm. this thing's going down. I feel but, uh, like but anyways, any like, excuse, yeah. Oh, that guy definitely got fucked because in the end, they only ended up paying his, like, his doctor bills 
And then, you know, none of his legal fees or any of that shit. So he totally fucked himself with that. But it's just an immensely stressful thing. And so I can completely imagine being in Agretzko's position of being the poor I am right now and then fucking up and being like, I am not getting out of this. Like, I don't know what I'm going to do, you know? Yeah, that's, that's a death sentence. It's, it's a death sentence. Basically. So the guy ends up meeting with her and she's worried like, oh God, he's going to claim that he was injured and I'm going like to get fucking... messing with his neck. He's like, ah, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And she's thinking she's going to get cleaned out, but he gives her a contract that's only like just to pay for the damages to his car. She signs a contract just for that. It's like 2000 bucks. It's not nearly as bad as it could have been. Because you know? she talks to the insurance adjuster and he's like, oh yeah, it's like 2000 bucks for this, 2000 bucks for this, $1,500 for this. So something yeah. probably in, along the lines of five to $6,000. It was, it was bad. Um, so she's, she's kind of getting out of it. And then uh, she talks about needing to get a second job to help pay for it. And this guy's like, oh, you can work for me. And then he he takes her, and they go to this underground concert venue, and it turns out that he is a manager for an idol group. So that's how she ends up becoming the accountant for these idols, and it eventually leads to her, um, she's doing karaoke as she normally does with her screamy stuff, and then the guy sees her doing karaoke, and and comes up with the idea of doing the death metal idol group. She's also started her own YouTube channel teaching people how to do the death metal screen. Because she's trying to get ad revenue and she's only making... She's like, I just want ad revenue. It's so fucking relatable! It's like literally, I did the same thing. I was like, I am dirt poor. It's a national pandemic. Uh, I guess I'll start leaning into YouTube because what the fuck else can I do right now? I gotta try to do something productive. Let's turn my hobby into a fucking... Into a revenue source. It's so relatable. It's insane. But yeah, so the the whole season's about that. Uh, you kind of get the idea in the end. I don't want to fucking go into super episode by episode details. Yeah. We're always doing this will stretch on forever. Don't rabbit hole. But uh, in the end, she is... Uh, she's... The, the group is getting really, really popular because of her death metal they're, singing. Yeah, and, uh, they're, they're, real, they're yeah. a real baby metal. The yeah, gimmick they're, they're literally baby metal. The gimmick is getting them attention. There's, like, blogs talking about them and stuff. Uh, lots of great character moments. Um, and uh, so the, the B-plot throughout all of this is uh, Ida, or Haida. Hi- yeah, Haida. Haida has been, he's been in love with Agretzko through the whole thing. For we five we know years, this. He's, he's confessed to her before and already been rejected. Um but uh, he's he can't stop simping. He just cannot stop. The simp is in his blood. And then this fucking cute ass girl at work is is totally into him, and he starts kind of dating her, but he's being a little bitch about he's it. Being real wishy washy. He just can't get over a wet school. Which one do I choose? Which one do I choose? As if there's a choice. That's the and, the worst part is that is yeah. that he thinks there's a choice and there isn't a choice, you know? Right. Because, because he he's, can't he's get over it. He's assuming that he can eventually break Retzko and and make her yeah. like him. Not everyone can be me, okay? <laughs> Not everyone he's one year away. can break a girl. Six but six years. That's the benchmark. Again, with this show literally being my life. So uh <laughs> <laughs> I had a scenario um literally earlier in the year that we ended up becoming a couple. Where there was another girl who I was talking to in college and and hanging out with, and she, and she was pretty cool. And it was the same scenario of like, I'm still in love with Hope. Hope has openly rejected me before. I know I'm insane and getting nowhere. <laughs> this girl seems to actually like me. And then Hope encouraged me to ask that girl out. (laughs) And it was, like, obviously... Which, like, kind of happens in this season, too. Exactly. (laughs) Which is, like, obviously I have been insane for multiple years, (laughs) simping for a girl that will never love me. Here's something that looks like it it will work, you know, and here I can... I finally have my out. Yeah, I'm still in love with girl A, but girl B is, like, something real and tangible, you know? And girl A is not happening it's never gonna happen everyone in my fucking life has told me it's not gonna happen i gotta give up on girl a go with girl b in real life girl b rejects me anyway <laughs> so Haida really had a chance here <laughs> he did because my real life version is that girl b also rejects me so i don't have girl so a no so there was no choice to, to begin simping. with 
And then I kept simping and, uh, you know, I eventually got girl A, which Haida is not going to do. <laughs> six easy years. Maybe he will. Yeah, six yeah. easy years. Maybe That's part of our Gretzko personal story. Maybe really will be a, a true parallel to your life. Yeah, so it's like Haida is very relatable for me because <laughs> I am an eternal simp. Um, and a Gretzko is also really relatable. It's perfect. <laughs> but basically, I, you know, Haida the whole season has been having the struggle with this other girl who he, he does really like, but he just can't. A Gretzko well, like, just fucking, he's got her Kokoro, man. And he just can't get over it. He likes her, uh, but it's very clear that it's, it's not the same intensity. But it's like, he's got like an adult relationship with potential with her versus with Gretzko. It's a crush that he cannot, like, get Work over, past. you know? Like, he's just hopelessly in love, and it's not a logical thing in any way, which is, like, I know, I get it, but also, like, ah! Because Retsko is so not about him. In yeah. the, like, there's a difference between, like, me and you when I simp for you. We were, like, good friends, like, yeah. close best friends, but Whereas, multiple times in the show, Haida makes a point of, of yeah. expressing that she he doesn't know anything about Retsuko's personal life. She doesn't talk to him about any of her problems. He makes a point of saying, like, oh, I'm that friend from work that you never hang yeah. out with outside of work. It's like she doesn't know him at all. He doesn't know her at all. She puts no effort into being his friend at all. She does not think about it's him a outside work of work. Relationship it's just at, a work on relationship. Every level. And there's one point where they hang out, which he takes, and I fucking relate to this too. He's like, we're gonna hang out, ooh! And, <laughs> and he, he makes this big deal about it and, and she's just using him, literally using him to learn how to play guitar yeah. because she thinks that he can play guitar even though he plays bass. Right, yes. <laughs> But so, she's interacting uh, with him on a one-to-one -one basis because it gets her something. And this yeah. isn't to fault Retsko, you know? Yeah. Like, she's focused in on her own shit. She's got things she's working through, too. So you totally get it from her lane, but you get it from Haida's point, too. Yeah. It's like, no one's wrong, but it's creating I mean, a very messy situation. In a, in a sense, they're both bad guys in, in, in the way they handle themselves. Because Retsko, I think, has a big flaw in the way that she is completely self-centered. She's very tunnel vision about yeah. what she needs. She is only ever thinking about her own needs. She doesn't think about her friend's needs at all, ever. It's always about her. She's always yeah. leeching off of her friends, getting emotional support from yeah. them. She's you, never helping anyone else. It's always about her. You'll even see that with, like, Gori and Washimi, where, yeah. like, Gori is working on the app, and Gretzko like takes no interest in it. She yeah. only, like, she only pretends she's interested when she gets cornered about asking for a personal loan and she feels bad about yeah. it. She's like, I have to redirect. Uh, ugh, so the she's, app. She's kind of shitty to her friends because she was only hanging out with her because she wanted to get a loan and then she, she chickened out. And then she right. goes to her other friend because I guess... She feels like she can trust talking to her more, but then it's like Shimi is like the more mature. Yeah, but then she kind of friend. chooses favorites with friends and, and isn't communicating very well right. with any of them so and making based them on worried. What she you know, can get out of it. yeah. And so it's like Retsko at every given point is just only ever thinking about herself. And it's like I get it. You have fucking shit going on, you know, and yeah. you don't want to deal with other people. It's I am easy the same to get way. The tunnel you know, vision when, I get tunnel when vision when you're feeling immensely pressured. Yeah, and you and you're not thinking about other people and like. She eventually has a conflict with Haida where she's like, I don't have to deal with your, like, your emotions yeah. are not re my responsibility. I have my own shit going on. And that's kind of part of the climax that we'll get to. But, uh, but she is just like the fact that she's so, like, she knows that he likes her, you know? Yes. And she doesn't fucking care or think about it in any way. She just thinks everything's okay. And then she'll, like, invite, come over to his house and stuff thinking that it's not a big deal. And it's right. like, you well, thinking, oh, she I'm has just no here consideration. to Yeah, no consideration for this guy's feelings whatsoever. And he's an idiot for buying into it, you know? Yeah, and, and he fucks up the good street. thing he has. And so eventually, like, the the new girl basically gives him an ultimatum because she comes over and she sees that Agretzko left her napkin there or yeah. whatever. Well, he makes it really <laughs> egregious because he invites them both over on the same fucking day! Yeah. Haida makes you deep mistakes. You don't do that, bro! He's a dumb fuck. <laughs> no! Oh, it's so painful. If you're figuring it out between two <laughs> chicks, you don't invite them both into your house on the same day. What is wrong with you? Yeah, he, c he couldn't control himself. He's a dumbass. <laughs> God. But, uh... So it blows up in his face, as obviously was going to happen. Um, Retsko basically uses him. And then she has been getting stalked by a fan of the idol group she's in, who uh, 
like confronts her at a at a fan gathering because they were doing a well, thing like, where they're selling it, their CDs. It builds because there's a fake Twitter account that has been yeah. ongoing for this this uh, idol group since before they got big, and eventually that account starts posting like candid pictures of them, and they're not sure where it's coming from. Then the account starts posting pictures of Retzko at her house, going yeah. into her apartment, going to like all these really personal places and it becomes really like, oh God, okay, well, what the fuck is this? Yeah. So Retzko's like really trying to ignore it because she's so caught up in like loving being an idol because she gets really into it. Like the, her emotional arc through this is like, she, she's been at this dead end job that she fucking hates going to. She hasn't had a reason to really exist beyond survival. And this is the first thing where she's turned her hobby into a thing that she's passionate about. Because she has this this point when she's doing the accounting where she's doing kind of a shitty job and like the the band is like hemorrhaging money and stuff. And then uh, what's her name? The bird lady, her Washimi. friend. Washimi yeah. goes like, "You're complaining to me, but have you actually put effort into this? Like, can you look right. yourself in the in the face and say that you are putting your all into this, or are you just?" She's like, if you don't like what you're doing, stop doing it. Right. But she's if like, you're well, going to do quit. it. And yeah. Retzko's like, well, I can't quit. She's like, well, then try. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, if you're going to, if you're going to do it, give a shit. Which for me, like fucking arrow in my heart, arrow in my Kokoro. And, and I was like, it sent me into an existential thinking of just like, if I need to think about that for literally everything I'm doing in my life right now of like, am I trying hard enough with anything I'm doing? Uh, this show's too fucking good. <laughs> it has a lot of very nuanced yeah. ideas. Because I feel that way a lot as an artist and a, a a career man is like, am I putting enough work into what I'm doing to justify complaining about literally anything, you know? Because I, I have problems all the time, but I'm always, you know, bitching about shit. But it's like, am I fucking trying? Am I actually trying hard enough? Or am I just like putting in the minimal minimal amount of effort like Retzko's doing and then being like, why isn't things going good? It's rough. It's rough uh, being an adult with a career. <laughs> a career that you have to self-motivate. Self-motivation is the worst. And this is really, you know, a, her, her first opportunity to self-motivate doing anything, you know, with her accounting job where it's kind of like, you are the, the leader of this. No one's going to tell you what to do. You kind of got to figure it out. Yeah. And so she becomes really good yes. at it. And Washimi gives my favorite advice, which is uh, everyone is faking that they know what they're fucking doing. Yep. And it's like, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Just do what you think is going to work and it, maybe it'll work. You know, if you have a good idea, do your idea. <laughs> you don't need permission. It's your job. So um, anyway, back to the stalker. Yeah, super hand. relatable. Yeah. So the stalker is coming after... Um, he confronts her at a, a fan gathering a fan because they sold these CDs and with each CD, there is a ticket that gives you 15 seconds of no, handshaking three. time, three seconds, mm -hmm. three seconds of handshaking time with an idol. And so this guy gets a hundred CDs with a hundred tickets. And so he gets to shake Retzko's hand for it's like five minutes. Yeah. 300 seconds. It's a fucking long ass time. Yeah. And so he literally holds her hand and just lays into her it berates her for five straight minutes and it's fucking disturbing to me like the tone that agretzko usually has and the things that it usually covers like this scene was fucking insane it was really because good. you had to sit there and like experience it as it was happening this was genuinely fucking terrifying yeah. to me because you know like especially and not to pull this, but as a girl, you know that there is, you're sub subject to so much of that scrutiny, no matter what yeah. your job is. Like, there's all sorts of people that would love to do that to you, no matter what your job is. But especially in the idol community, where you can't, you, you can't fight back, you know? You yeah. have to sit there and just take it. And it's four minutes of this dude dead, just like looking her in the face. She cannot complain she can't pull away she's completely powerless as he just exerts this aggression onto her and he's like calling her a whore and yeah. like just really vile so let me shit point out um we've been watching a gretzko dubbed the entire time i think this is i haven't listened to the japanese except for briefly in like a trailer the dub is fucking good very good like very very good don't fuck with me on this the a gretzko dub is fucking good 
I don't give a shit about any other dove in the world. I don't care your fucking feelings about doves. I'm not going to have an argument about this. Mm -hmm. The Agretzko dove is fucking good. It's and always been It's good. like, it's really good. It's been good the entire this time. This scene especially, So this though. scene, God. like, being able to hear, I think, the language this guy is using in English and how out of Ooh. place it is within a Gretzko when he's calling her a bitch and a whore. They, like, there's no profanity in a Gretzko. Yeah, exactly. So like, when it, you it's hear never this guy like this. say these words, it really, it's a fucking gut punch. And, and like, you're just like, oh. I really think if it were in Japanese, just the fact that it's not our native language, there wouldn't be as much weight to this scene. Yeah. You know? Because that was like genuinely horrifying <laughs> for me. Just, I know that I obviously I've never lived in that situation, but I've felt that presence before. Yeah. And it's you. It's pretty great. It's pants shittingly awful just mm. and i want to you know i want to make it clear the gretzko dub is great and if you don't think it's great you are wrong you are objectively <laughs> wrong i'm sorry and i'm not having that discussion <laughs> it's not an argument it's a good dub this is not I'm open not, for discussion you, you could fuck off with your all I dubs or bad i will buy 100 cds and hold your hand for the 300 language seconds is. while i berate you <laughs> It was it was a great scene. It was very disturbing. And so Agretzko's fucked up from that, but she's trying to like push it down. She's totally trying to brush it off. Yeah. Because that's and again, not to bring this into it, but as a woman, that's what you're taught to do. When people like treat you like yeah. that, you're supposed to be like, oh well, well don't let it bug you. It's, it's also not a big deal. Just it's like Retzko's, no, that's fucked up. It's Retzko's character to do that with literally everything. Though. That's so any, I don't. You know, I think most but, girls are. Have but that like, it, that it also plays mindset. into the overarching theme of her character admitting nothing that's going. I bad. agree, but it's like, also a commentary on that. Yeah. First of all, the idol field, of course, but I think also women at large have to deal with things like that a lot yeah. more than people realize. Which is why it's really impressive that this is coming from a male director and writer, but he's able to yeah. write female characters so well. Like they're all characters that. You've met a girl like that, you know, or you are that girl. Yeah. Like, it's well, insane. It's just, we, we have to talk to the the mostly male internet base who think that women are just complaining constantly on the internet. So they're, okay, they're like, what are you talking about? Women, case, women are bitching constantly. If, if a real woman isn't telling you her perspective on what that situation feels like to her, then they're never going to learn. Yes. Like, I'm <laughs> sorry that you've never personally experienced that, but I promise you... Most women have had maybe not a situation that dangerous, but you felt that way. Yeah. It's on my fucking life. Yeah, so it was it was fucked. But anywho, so um she ends up the the guy stalking her, she's kind of like, Oh, nothing's going wrong, nothing's going wrong and then She's he like, I'll be fucking, careful, I'll be careful. Like they realize that he followed her to work through the social media posts he's been making and then she's walking out, and uh, fucking Haida catches on to it, and the dude comes at her with a box cutter, Ugh. and Haida saves her! <laughs> she falls and hits her head, and Haida uh, gets cut on the hand and shit, and uh, he takes her to the hospital. Um, and then she's basically traumatized for a little while, and she, she like, goes into hiding um, at, her, at her mom's house, and she's, like, not leaving at all. And then Haida's all concerned about her. Uh, through the dating app that what's her name had been Gory, creating, yeah, Gory had been creating. dating app that Tadano has helped her. Uh, yeah, um, Haida improve. tries to use the app, and I I believe that him and Agretzko are the only people on the app. That is, That's, seems I, likely. But they he uses the app and he gets a hundred percent match with Retzko. Um, after so when when he saved Retzko, uh, the the other girl was there that that liked Haida. And she had given him the ultimatum of, like, me or her, basically. And then she sees the way he reacted with Retzko, and she's like, I'd like to believe that you would do this for anyone, but I know it's just because it's her. And obviously you're not over this girl, so, like, you know, I'm out. Yeah, like, you made like, your choice. Nah. Which is good for her. Hi to fuck that up. She was a really, really good girl. She didn't deserve that. Uh, so she could move on. It's, it's fucking sad. But, but I mean, uh, that's how you know this isn't a uh, an anime for high schoolers because yeah. the girl literally went, oh, okay, well, there's clearly no chance here. I'm out. See yeah. ya. It's not just some harem exactly. where every girl is hovering <laughs> around you like, but the like, D. That girl is handled really well. She She's really very is. realistic in the way that she like is is trying to make advances on him and is sensing the fact that he's like got this hang up and she's like being nice about it and stuff and it's just like a really interesting uh She's adult like very, relationship, yeah, she's you very know? mature in the way that she handles, like, navigating that relationship. Yeah, it was pretty nice. She was a great character. 
Um, but anyways, Haida's now with the, the rest of the, the friends, and they're sitting around, and they're like, you fucking dumb fuck. Get over Retsuko, you fucking idiot. It's never gonna happen. What the fuck is wrong with you, you fucking dumbass? You fucking loser! Yeah. <laughs> That's basically what they're saying to him. And then he's like, yeah, I know I'm stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's very relatable. And then... And then Haida uses the app. He gets on the dating app, and he perfect one hundred percent matches with Retsko. And it's supposed to be that the the matches through this app are based on your your behavior, like yeah, your subconscious than user activity. You put in your profile. So like the match, a perfect match. And he's like, I got it. He's like, this is it. I I have to be with Retsko. And he goes to her house to show her the app results <laughs> to be like, we Which, have like, to get together. Bro, she's fucking traumatized. Yeah. What are you fucking doing? And like, he's coming from a good place of like, he's worried about her. But, but like, he, he's worried about her in the, the the context of how it's going to affect his ability to get with her. Yeah, essentially. Not because he's genuinely worried about how she's doing. He's a fucking mess, you know? And so he's, like, trying to cheer her up with this. And she's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Because he, like, the group takes him to karaoke and then makes him and her sit in a room to talk. And, and they're talking. That's where he shows her the dating match. And she's just like, what the fuck is wrong with you? And so they actually start singing at each other. And, and, and Haida, like, voices his concerns about how she's been acting towards him in a, in a death metal song. And then she lays into him in a death metal song. And then that's, like, pretty much the end of the season. It's, like, it's left at that Yeah, there's sort just of a stage. rift. Like, they, they go to work again, and it's like they have a friendly interaction. But we don't really know where they're relationship stands they're definitely not together like no let's go is definitely like fuck no, off yeah she was yeah. not interested in any of that shit because hide is trying to pull the like fucking hero like i'm here for you you know yeah, why don't like, you lean oh, on me well, if you know if you can't trust the world then trust me and it's like bitch what and Shut Retsuko's like, I don't know you. Like, I don't know why you act this way and you're so obsessed with me and concerned about me when we literally don't know each other. You don't know fucking anything yeah. about me, which I partially would criticize Retsuko for because she won't open up to people. You know, it's like he tries constantly to he get does. to know her and spend time with her and she just refuses all the time. But he can't take a fucking hint that she's not interested in him like that and it's not happening. So it's understandable for her to be like, what do you fucking mean I'm supposed to be leaning on you? When have I expressed that I am your friend? You know? Yeah. When because have we hung out outside of work that I would confide in you in any way? I agree. <laughs> Retsko definitely has trouble opening up to people. Yeah. But... She has, like, Gori, and she has Washimi, and she has opened up especially to Washimi. Yeah. So it's definitely just that she's not interested in opening up to Haida. And in fairness, there have been moments where she did open up to Haida, or spent time with him. Like, the Christmas special, they're together at the end. But, like, she did reject him, you know? And, like, she doesn't actively hang out. Like, they are just casual friends. They're work friends. You know? Like, maybe she's done a little bit of leading him on. But not to an extent that I think she's really in the wrong for anything that that she sh I that think she sh has this obligation to tell him about her life. She's you know? probably unaware of it. Yeah, because she's so busy thinking about herself. <laughs> well, she's she's thinking, and and maybe you can relate to that. That like this is a thing that happened, and he's over it. You know. Yeah. She doesn't realize that he's never gonna get over it, and that he's gonna keep feeling the same way because like that's how boys be <laughs> boys be like and that i totally get but it's like he he needs to get out of his fucking head and, and give her some fucking space and his perfect way to do that would have been going out with this other girl where he had a good thing with and like it's it's that assumption that like just because he doesn't have the same insane feelings he has for a gretzko for this other girl that he won't develop that over yeah. time you know it's like he he expresses that he's liked Gretzko for five years. So the intensity of these feelings has had five years yeah. to accrue. So it's like, yeah, of course you don't feel as strongly about Inui. You've known yeah. her for like two weeks. And he talks about how with, with Retsuko, it took him six months before he started to he like didn't, her. Yeah, he was like, at first she was so boring. And then he became obsessed with but her. But then, and it's like, yeah. Why, did, why couldn't you do that for this other girl? Why can't you get over this girl that is telling you she doesn't want to go out with you? It's fucked. 
But you know, that's his character development. Is is he's he's got to learn to either get over this, or retzko has got to learn to be friends with him or something. I really something's like, got to give. In the context of my life, it's like oh, they should get together eventually, and, and they should be compatible. But like in the context of the real world, where most people live in, in the context of the story, <laughs> he needs to get over her, yeah. and he should have done it this season. And he's just fucking just fucked. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad. I think definitely the the way this season ended and the way he kind of like f- forced his expectations onto Retzko are gonna yeah. it's gonna make a huge divide and I don't see Retzko ever being interested in actually being in a relationship with him. Yeah. It was pretty bad. <laughs> So. And I don't know, you know, he already fucked up with the perfect girl, so I don't right. know what his... Where do you go from here, buddy? He probably, he needs to have a a finding himself arc, because he's too focused on being with other people and not about, like, who, what he's about, you know? Yeah. Where, like, he's obviously this guy who gave up on his dreams and became an office worker, and he's just kind of surrendered to that and become complacent, and he's so focused on Retzko that he's not even thinking about, like... What do I want to do with my life? Yeah. Am I going to work at this job forever? He has none of those thoughts. It's just, can I get with Retzko? Another thing I relate to a lot, <laughs> which is like you you get this infatuation and this obsession with someone that it's like, you know that you should be focusing on like, oh, I should I need to be thinking about my job and all this shit. But it's just like, you can't help what you're thinking about. And, and that's preoccupying his thoughts. And it's very unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> but part of that is, like, he needs to get some distance, stop hanging out for with her for a while. Maybe he should start working out. <laughs> Maybe he should get back into the base. You know, he yeah. needs to fucking take time to himself and figure his shit out. And then maybe through that distance, Retzko might come to like him again, you know? Yeah, maybe, maybe if, if he, he figures works on some himself. of his shit out. Yeah. Instead of just, like, being obsessed with her all the time and being really overbearing and shitty. Yeah. Because I think, and I don't think he does it intentionally, but, you know, people who are obsessive and, like, almost fetishize a person like that, like, the yeah. person who's being fetishized usually isn't interested in that relationship. Like, that's, that's yeah. not, that's not a good basis for, <laughs> for a relationship. <laughs> but, if I were to give Haida advice based on my own life, <laughs> it's, Six years. If it doesn't work in six years, then you give up. Take a little time. <laughs> Get a little distance. This did happen with us. I did Get take a little distance. Get accepted to a distance. college in another state. <laughs> well, that was part of my arc of of trying to escape. Um, well, there was the JMU episode, which was me trying to escape. City escape, um, yeah. Because I, I tried to go to another school. Or at least I thought about it. I, I wanted to see if I could get in. I did. I was, like, accepted, but I didn't go. Um, cause I was just kind of going like, I need to get the fuck out of this place. I, I'm sick of my friends. I'm sick of the situation. I mean, I need to get distance from things, but instead of doing that, I just kind of like, I, I worked out a whole lot and I, and I was just like, I'm not going to spend time on my phone and I'm just going to like focus and, and, and I stopped taking my antidepressants that were making me more depressed. <laughs> Remember and, uh, kids, get off your meds. That's stop taking answer. meds. Get in the gym. That's the only way. So I, you know, I focused on myself, I focused on school, I got in shape, and then, you know, and then things went to shit, and I started talking to Hope again, (laughs) and and then things were uphill from there, you know? I came into it with a new perspective where I valued the friendship more, because it was like, I'm no longer just, like, in this headspace of infatuation, I have come full circle into, like, I appreciate this friendship for what it is, regardless of where it goes. That's where Haida needs to get. He's still in this, like, I want this friendship to go this way, and I want her to be with me, and I want to be her boyfriend. And he needs to get over that and go, if you really give a shit about Gretzko, you need to get over it. You need to just be her friend in whatever capacity she wants you to be. Go out with another girl. Do something else. And don't count on her coming around because it, you can't force this shit, you know? Work on yourself, you little bitch. <laughs> ah, so good! I love a go. <laughs> so good! Some very specific situations. It's very specific to my life. <laughs> Just why it's awesome. And I need, now, right now, I need to do what Retzko is doing and focus on being better at all the shit I do, I guess. And uh, maybe I should probably start working out again. That's probably probably help my mental, my mental health. Uh, it was great. Yeah. Any more thoughts and feelings about Retzko? 
I think we covered it. I think I probably relate to the characters more strongly in this particular season. It explored a lot of uh, really, really neat stuff. I enjoyed the uh, more serious tone of some yeah. of some of the scenes. It was able to really kind of go in, which it always has. You know, it always a nice mature adult relationship yeah. exploration, which I always enjoy. Seeing season two had a lot of great stuff with that, with the Gretzko's relationship and her kind of like that was her struggle with, I want to be a stay-at-home mom. Like, I've fucking resigned myself to having any ambitions whatsoever. I just want to have kids and retire from working because capitalism is crushing me. And so this season was about her, like, finding her dream job and, like, yeah. actually being passionate about something and focusing on her own shit and not trying to get with another guy and, and be a stay-at-home mom. Yeah. This is very much a Gretzka working on herself. Yeah. Sure. Well, she has not finished because at the end of the season, she does leave the idol group, even though she really loved it. Um, not totally sure on why. Maybe it was just overwhelming. And I mean, with the uh, with the trauma of yeah. that. I mean, I'm sure I'm sure she has not completely worked through that. Yeah, it is a reprieve from the intensity of that feeling, but it's not gone. So yeah. I, I do understand. There's the intense trauma. I think to maybe to an extent it was like she was kind of like persuaded into it and got overly into it because it was like the first cool thing she's ever done. Yeah. So maybe she wants to find something that's like her own thing to do. I don't know. I'm very, you know, I'll look forward to season four as always. Yeah. Um, but fucking good shit, man. Good shit. It as gets always. me in my, in my Kokoro. And I'll, as always, the underlying trappings of late stage capitalism. Yes, but she does have a song about capitalism and how much she hates it. I think that's the uh, <laughs> the real theme of all of Agretzko. It really fuck is. Fuck late stage yeah. capitalism. Because that's the theme of Japan. <laughs> it's like <laughs> late stage capitalism just running people into suicide. Yeah. It's fucking intense. I did appreciate that they. Um, Brought back Tadano a little bit for a couple scenes. He was yeah. he was relevant to certain aspects of the plot, which is nice. It's nice to see that he didn't just drop off the face of the earth because, yeah. uh, oh, we're done with this character. Bye. It's like, cool. Yeah. Nice. It All was right. real good. Very cool. Maybe we should wrap it up here so that this doesn't become an hour and, hour half, and a half long. Yeah, only 45 um, minutes. I think this has been a good, yeah, but it's, <laughs> it was a good 45 minutes. I think it was pretty good. Um that's it for Gretzko. Go watch wow, it. Obviously, watch if you Gretzko. haven't already, please watch a Gretzko. It's fucking great. Watch it dubbed. Don't be an idiot. I feel like anyone who doesn't like it, watch it in Japanese. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, you, there's you're so watching much charm wrong, in the dub. True, it's so good. No. It's just a really good dub. Don't fuck with me on this. It's a great dub. It feels like it's natively meant to be in English because the dub is so fucking good. Yeah. Fuck around and find It's partially out. because it's, I think it's because it's animal characters and it's an adult plot. So like the voice acting isn't the corny dub voice acting you're used to. It's more yeah. natural and flexible. It's and not like adults trying to pretend to be teenagers. And I don't know. It's just, it just works for this for some reason. It just really works. I think it's just the kind of thing where you, you just can relate to it much more easily, you know? So it's yeah. easier maybe to portray those characters because they are just like normal people. Yeah. And you don't have to pretend you're like some OP Kirito fucking god tier dual swordsman. Just like, yeah, you're just a, a fucking girl working through her shit. Mm. Makes me want to go watch some fucking Honey and Clover and some fucking, we gotta get dead. March comes in like a lion. It's on Netflix. <laughs> it's probably. It is good. I've watched, as I've told you, I've watched some of it. We just need yeah. to watch all of it. Watch your Gretzko. All right, bye. Thanks for watching. Bye. Stick around, like, comment, well, subscribe. Well, it's Vic and Hope. Don't forget to like and subscribe. There's boxes all over this bitch. I don't know where it is anymore. Hit the button. Ring the bell. Have a good weekend. Go watch your Gretzko. You should have said, hit the button, ring the bell. Have a good weekend. Go to hell. Go to hell.